Uh, so very good to see you all. I'll start sharing my screen and I will be your data best buddy for upcoming 20 minutes. Um, we will talk about data pitfalls when it comes to D2C brands and what kind of issues they typically experience. Um, um, first, a slight uh, introduction about uh, our agenda today. So we will talk about a few words about Woolman, why do we exist? How do we help our customers with data? And then I will point out few data pitfalls. I will challenge you in an elegant manner, ask you a few questions. What are you doing with D2C data? What's your maturity with D2C data? What are the most typical issues you have been experiencing? Then we will talk about sort of like hot fixes. What a D2C brand should do? What should you know about Shopify's data model itself? Uh, what are the data blind spots? What is so-called data source comparison? Why should you have multiple data sources to build that holistic trust? And then we talk about customer segmentation, the importance, especially in an economic situation as the one that is existing right now. And then finally, we'll do a wrap up uh, talking about data strategy, ownership of data, and then uh, giving you the key bullets that what you should do so sort of as a checklist and finally you have the possibility to ask questions so uh, very much so welcome to be here if you want to ask anything feel free to use the chat window here i have already received few questions in advance but during this 20 minutes feel free to address any possible questions by the end of this session we will go through your questions one by one um, what is Woolman? Woolman is Europe's largest Shopify plus agency. D2C is our DNA. We have employees in nine different European countries and we are currently serving our customers globally. Um, our vision is to combine insights, data and profitability to make sure that our customers, those top D2C brands would grow in a profitable way and that they would have the full transparency over data. So far, we've helped 350 plus brands during five years. We have more than 100 employees. And as an example, we have built more than 18 private Shopify apps. The biggest thing you should know about uh, Woolman is that we are a one-stop shop so that you get everything that you need related to Shopify Plus development, data, uh, marketing, customer acquisition, uh, logistics, and everything else, you get them under one roof, which is us. My name is Mikko Rekola. I'm the chief evangelist here at Woolman, and I've been helping our customers for and a half years. My role is to make sure that our top performing D2C brands are on top and they know everything about data. Well, the big question then is that how to spot these pitfalls? What should a brand be aware of uh, when it comes to data? And I would like you to think these five following questions. Number one, do you know how many key elements your online store has? Uh, so it's about like segmentating your customers, how to segmentate your customers, who is responsible of segmenting your customers, and are you aware of these segments? As example, if I would wake you up in the middle of the night, would you be able to define your key segments, understand their key KPIs such as average order value, return percentage, or purchase frequency? Question number two is that how can Shopify help you collecting data? This is a very typical topic and I will get back to this soon. But the question is that have you ever thought that how could Shopify Plus help you to collect data? Then number three, this comes from practice. Have you ever delivered so-called kill list for your marketing? What are kill lists? Why should they be used? We will also dive in here soon. Question number four, do you use a single customer view, also known as SCV, for a holistic customer understanding? So as example, if you look at your best current customer, have you been looking at that one single precise customer and looked at what kind of purchase behavior that customer has done in your store? Are you aware of who these people are? 
And finally, number five, do you have a solid data strategy next to your business strategy? And this is the one that we typically challenge our customers with. As, as still today in 2022, seems that the majority haven't even heard about a data strategy. So please take a moment yourself, think about these questions. Do you know answer to these questions? Lovely. Let's start rolling. Well, the, the basic beauty of Shopify is that Shopify has a very standardized data model. In essence, this means that they are using this standardized Shopify checkout. So here on the right side, you see an example of Shopify Plus or Shopify checkout, and it is standard. You always have those uh, fields which you need to fill in to make sure that you will uh, process the order and get to that thank you page and undo the payment. And the beauty of this is that when this is so standardized, meaning that these fields are all the same for all of the Shopify merchants, you will collect all of these data points. Of course, plus merchants have the ability to remove fields or add fields. In some of our customer cases, you may want to add a field. It might be a birthday or some other data point that is essential for your business. But the basic beauty is that we can grab this data and data is flowing very nicely. So if, as example, you would want to analyze all of your existing customers or all of your top tier customers, you could already collect very nice and clear data points for further inspection due to this standardized checkout. But the question I want to ask is that which are the data points that matter you the most? And there is no universal answer. It depends on your business. If you are in beauty, if you are in fashion, if you are in fast moving consumer goods, it might be that those most essential data points are all different and they definitely are case specific. And the real beauty comes when discussing relations. So it might be interesting to understand that, as example, where are you shipping the most? What's the city? What's the conversion there? But uh, not just shipping, but as example, if you combine shipping with another attribute, such as payments, then you can truly do a more in-depth analysis of customers. As example, customers in a a certain city are using a payment method one and then in a certain city they are using the other payment method and then you can do a, a sort of like cross analyze is that how do these customer segments behave where are my best customer segments and can i do some kind of adjustment when it comes to customer segmentation and more targeted customer acquisitions so number one, Shopify's data model is standardized and this uh, sort of like brings you the beauty that all data that you collect from physical sales when it, when it comes to Shopify POS or your Shopify Plus stores, the data is always in the same format thanks to Shopify's checkout. Number two, um, this is sort of like related to the data blind spots. Um, and this is something that initially came from our customers as they were talking to us, especially me, that I have certain blind spots. I have issues with data. I have that kind of like a struggle with data. So um, typically that, that comes from the fact that uh, you lack certain KPIs. You don't quite understand certain KPIs or that you have looked at KPIs on a very straightforward level. The most typical is that you're looking at sales, euros, units, margins, that's it. But then you don't go much more in depth when it comes to those sales. How are they actually being built or how are my customers behaving? So here I would love to bring you a case example. We have one fashion customer and they started to analyze their existing customers. And they noticed that the ones that are using Apple Pay are by far the most valuable customers. Prior to this data analysis, they had no idea. They were just looking at, okay, these type of customers are the most valuable ones, but they didn't do a deep dive in data. So my recommendation here, number one, is that you would go much more in depth in data. You would try to understand that which are the KPIs you should actually follow besides those most typical e-commerce KPIs, such as average order value, return percentage, uh, sales, and, and few others. Then a, a, another one is that you should have probably a holistic understanding of returns and impact 
of actions to reduce these unwanted returns. So especially if you're in a business where you have tens of percentage of returns, then you are in this kind of a situation looking at how to reduce them and what are the ways to reduce them uh, and how should you do a much more in-depth analysis so that as example are the returns just like in general are they specific for an item a SKU a print a color whatever size to really understand that why people are returning and how can one then analyze these returns and how can one hopefully then reduce these returns we have some really good examples here and I will get back to the returns topics in a heartbeat then number three is probably the most typical in market, which is like marketing attribution. So due to iOS 14 and uh, cookie banners and all of that stuff, it's more and more tough to measure your marketing, to truly understand that what, uh, what attribution matters, when does the purchase occur? Should it be thanks to Google Ads? Should it be thanks to Meta Ads? Should it be thanks to something else? So understanding that customer journeys are even more trickier to monitor. So our basic recommendation is to sort of like start with the first step is to use post purchase service. They are delightfully great apps on App Store, such as Grapevine, which you can automatically connect with your thank you page. And you can try to ask those tough questions directly from customers just a moment after they have purchased from you. As example, where did you hear about us? What made you purchase? And many, many else. Uh, so those questions, when you address those to the customers, then customers are more than keen to reply uh, immediately after they have done the purchase. You've seen customer cases where they post purchase survey response rates are 70 plus or 85 plus percent. So you can collect that data directly from customers, which helps you to understand marketing attribution on the basic level. And the beauty of this is that this is not only online. So if you are running Shopify Plus and if you are running also Shopify POS, you are having a chain, you are having multiple stores, or you are now for the holiday season opening pop-ups, you can make sure that you also measure attribution there. So the majority of these P uh, PPS service, post purchase service, also enable the possibility to track that in physical life. Therefore, our customers typically ask questions when, they, when their end customers are uh, just about to purchase something in a physical life. How did you hear about us? Do you want to have a receipt, a receipt to your e email? And those sort of questions. So you can also measure marketing attributes and in the physical life, thanks to Shopify POS and this post purchase service. It requires some additional steps, but it's been extremely valuable. And then that, that makes the possibility that you can truly like uh, measure omni-channel customer journeys without any expensive uh, marketing measuring operations. So within these data blind spots, what else? How should I now, I now know that? What should I do to make sure that I would stay on top of my own data? The basic thing that I want to point out is that you should have uh, a data source comparison being done. The main source of data for most brands run, running on uh, Shopify Plus uh, who are in D2C is Shopify's own checkout. So you are uh, collecting data when people purchase from you, you are collecting session data and you rely heavily on Shopify Plus data. And that's art of beauty. Shopify Plus is having a great data model, but the, the sort of the issue there is that in most cases, this doesn't cover all of your data needs. You still want to understand better these customers, or there are vital data points that you can't cover with Shopify. So then the question is where to catch these additional data points. Typically, it's being recommended for our customers that they would use some kind of a loyalty program, typically like Lotpo or Loyalty Lion, those are great examples. And with, with those, you can then fill in those blanks. So as example, you want to understand their birth date, you want to understand more of their purchase behavior, you want to understand their feedback on a new category. And those are the ones that you can then easily track with these uh, ecosystem friendly loyalty softwares. So our number one recommendation would be always to have either Yotpo or Lion being used. And then the big thing, 
just installing the software itself or starting a low loyalty program is not enough. So you should then actively track that which are the data points that you want to gather, how to make sure that they would be sort of like a vital part of the process and how to make sure that also customers uh, are being rewarded for handing in those added additional golden nuggets of data. Second part is automation. So as example with Klaviyo, you can easily get more data in. It might be that you are doing a uh, sort of like a discount that, hey, if you are shopping for the first time, get 10% off, fill in your email and fill in some uh, magical data points. As example, am I more interested in men's or ladies items or do I have some kind of a preference? Um, that's actually something that has been very, very valuable as well. So again, easy tool to collect more data uh, and get more data points uh, together to make sure that you would have as holistic understanding of your customers as only possible. Then as mentioned on the last slide, post process service have become a standard in D2C. If you are a D2C brand and you are not doing post purchase survey, you are actually like burning money. So our basic recommendation is that you would have a loyalty program, you would have automation software such as Clavio, and you would also have a post-purchase survey. Uh, then the question is that, okay, sounds like a lot. Should I really have a post-purchase survey? What good does it give for me? And the thing here is that post-purchase surveys, as they are a vital part of Shopify's thank you page, they have just gotten so very heavy uh, percentage of replies. So as example, in our customer cases, we have seen like over 70, over 85% of customers replying. And if you do a similar questionnaire uh, with, as example, Clavio, the typical answer percent has been somewhere between 15 and 18%. So if you compare 15 to 70, you definitely want to go for the 70. And these post-purchase services are also rather affordable. So the labor needed or the money needed there is uh, just like a uh, few dimes here and there, but it's been a key source of data. Then finally, that if you also are in the physical life or if you are considering the physical life, our basic recommendation always is Shopify POS. So then you can track your customers omni-channel, uh, which is great. And that also can show you some changes in customer behavior. You know this now after the pandemic that customers love to go to the physical locations as well, which might be interesting if you are thinking about investing more in, in the physical presence. And finally, I will also challenge you. What other data sources you want to have? Where should you collect data? Just to give you an idea, it can be as example, a physical event. And in that physical event, you can then collect more data. Those have been rather popular among our customers, but it also can be a virtual event. So think about those data sources that you absolutely must have and think about ways how you can collect data from customers. I also like to point out that there is nothing wrong about knowing more of your customers. It's sort of even the uh, must for the merchant and the brand to understand their customers better. So if you can think of ways which would help you to understand your end consumers, those are more than welcome. Well, then about the customer segmentation, and this should be a no brainer for everyone. And customer segmentation itself is like rather easy, but I want to challenge you even deeper here because this is the thing where we have seen the biggest impact this season. So due to the changes in economy, every single D2C brand should uh, think about how they are doing customer segmentation. Typically, uh, most customer segmentation has been done so that you look at demographics, you look at like men, women, different areas, or then you look at certain items, has been buying only red items, black items. And uh, then the next level, which was sort of like a buzzword of 2020, would be CLV, customer lifetime value. So then you are trying to do segmentation based on customer lifetime. Uh, value and error and analysis. As example, you are looking at customers who are bringing the most money, or then you are doing an error and analysis and you are trying to win back customers who are churning or who have become passive. Those actions are still correct. But the thing here is that you should actually have much more segmentation rules in place than just two separate uh, sort of like categories. 
So the thing that we have seen the most, where you actually get the most results, is that you would have hybrid strategies, which means that you are actually combining the CLV and error from analysis with, as example, demographics or additional data points that are linked with your products. So as example, it has to be a customer who has ordered more than five times during the last year and has ordered only in a certain category and has a CLV estimation of more than 500 euros. And the thing there is that if you are able to deliver such audiences for your marketing department or if you are doing a customer acquisition yourself, you can make sure that your marketing is laser targeted. And this is the benefit, especially when doing customer retention, you want to get the old customers back. So you want to make sure that you are speaking to the customers, not as a mass, but that it will be personalized and it would have something to do with your previous or existing behavior. And the beauty of this is that you can also make sure that you are not accidentally doing marketing for segments that are not your key audiences. You, you should definitely care. And we are also delighted to help with this segmentation. As we have noticed that this might be tricky in some cases. And as you have like tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of customers, we can then together plan ways how to do even better customer segmentation. And then about the data strategy, who owns the data? So this is somewhat of a linked topic, but this is probably the most important topic of them all. So we talk about data strategy with our top tier D2C customers. And the thing is that it should be a separate strategy of your business strategy. I will repeat myself. Data strategy should be a separate strategy of your business strategy. And here you see a very typical example that what you do with data, how should you utilize a data strategy? And the basic question is what data to collect, who sits on the data, what's the data governance, what about data security, and few other questions. So most common data strategy should be that you should have planned together with your top management a data strategy. What data do you want to collect? What is your data strategy in upcoming two, three, five years? What are the essential data points that you need to have? What are the ones that you preferably would like to have? And who is sitting on the data? I've seen multiple cases where there is no clear owner of a D2C branch data. That's horrible. There should be someone who is responsible of the data, who is looking at the data, who is looking at all of these matters and who is making sure that uh, the brand is um, proceeding with a separate data strategy. And this also requires investments. But what we have seen is that the most valuable D2C branch who are go growing the fastest always have a very clear and separate data strategy. And it might be in some cases that if your company is getting more fin financing or if someone is even acquiring the company, the actual value is partly in your business operations, but in most cases it's in your customer database and everything that is related to their purchase behavior. So this is the actual big, big thing. So please, if you haven't been aware of data strategy, make sure that you would be. And if you have any related questions, we are delighted to help with your data strategies as well. Then going for the data key takeaways. What have you learned about today when it comes to D2C brands and data? Number one, make sure that you do customer segmentation in multiple ways, not just in a single way. Uh, I will shortly present you Alice, which is our business management platform, and we do offer up to 23 segmentation options, which has been essential in an uncertain market situation as this so that you can try out different segments and then you can follow their behavior. And as example, in multiple cases, we have been spotting that certain customer segments are not working this season as they used during the summer, so that they have then done some adjustments in marketing, customer acquisition, and even as far as product design. So uh, make sure that you would do customer segmentation in separate different ways. Number two, make sure that you would have a data strategy in place. If this is a complete new topic, then you can do a discovery around the topic. And if you need help with this, we are delighted to help. Number three, spot the most essential data points for your business. 
What are you lacking today? If there are data points that would be useful for you to better understand your customers and their behavior, then you should definitely list those. Don't rely too much on Shopify's data. Even though Shopify's data is gold, you still need to have secondary data sources. Typically, there are sources such as Klaviyo. Um, it can be also like loyalty programs done with, as example, Yotpo, or they can be something else. But just to make sure that you should have some kind of a list of essential data points for your business and to make sure that you would follow them accordingly. If you are still lacking something, don't be afraid. But the basic thing would be that you would understand the ones that you are uh, you are still lacking. And then with your team and possible help, think about ways to get there. And finally, recognize most common data pitfalls in advance. So from more re uh, from reactive to proactive assessment. So please, data is essential to every single D2C business. So make sure that you would uh, think about things that are data related in advance before you run into trouble. Um, that would be my last key takeaway here. If you're struggling with data, having data issues, we are delighted to offer you a solution called Ellis. Uh, it's done in-house by us um, and it's been used by some top online brands. So if you want to have a demo, please, check ellis.is or send me an email. What does Ellis then do? Ellis does collect data from the top sources. Shopify Plus is our master, and we can get data from the most used Shopify apps, such as Klaviyo, Yotpo, uh, and a few others. And then we are also using most used marketing platforms there. We do connectors, we do all the big data, we do data warehousing so that our customers that can use a very easy to use, straightforward, easy to digest uh, platform to track their data. What is our beauty is that out of the box, we do support multiple Shopify POS locations. So if you're selling in physical life, we do support you there. Or if you have multiple Shopify Plus stores, as example, multiple brands, or you're selling to multiple countries, we get you covered. We can collect all the data in a single place to offer you a single truth that is easy to understand. Here is an example of our sales dashboard. And finally, this solution is currently used by some top brands such as H&M Group, Acon, Post Power Tools, and many, many others. Lovely. If you have any questions, now would be the perfect time to send those questions to the chat window. Um, I received or, already before the event one question, and, and that was that, hey, what should I do if I do influencer marketing and data? Is that something that I should be aware of? Yes, definitely. That's a very typical one. So Shopify does offer the possibility to track, as example, influencers with those discount codes. Um, and that would be our recommendation that you would use the feature. And secondly, please don't track that kind of sales just by a spike on that one single day that what happened, but track that on a longer time span, as example, three to six months, and try to follow that what does it mean for that customer relationship? Are they, re are they returning the goods? Are they keeping the goods? Are they coming back? So please, when you as do some kind of like assessment of your influencers, don't look only at single day sales. If you have any further questions, please uh, send us the questions and I will be delighted to check them out.